With another blown save on Sunday night, Clay Holmes has the league lead in blown saves and it exposes a big problem that the Yankees have. But is it as easy as saying it's all Clay Holmes' fault? What's going on guys, the King of Honor 61st June, I'm back with another video and yes, Clay Holmes has once again blown a game, blown a series and screwed up the best start of Marcus Stroman's season. It did not look good. And I was prepared to come on here and shit on Clay Holmes all until I found a group of tweets from a user that goes by the name Yankees File. I'm gonna put some of the tweets up here. Great follow go check his stuff out but what really got me thinking clay holmes in his nine saves has an expected weighted on base average of 281 now what is expected weighted on base average better known as x woba it is a stat that is used to predict if a ball will end up being a hit or an out using like launch angle exit velocity and a whole host of other things it's a very analytical stat but it is a good tool to see how good a pitcher is executing his pitches how well a hitter is able to barrel the pitch up and whether pitchers are either getting shelled or just are unlucky now if we look at that number again 281 x woba there are only five players in major league baseball that have a worse x woba than 281 so in the blown saves that clay holmes has he is making hitters hit like a bottom five hitter in baseball along with that the batting average on balls and played against him has been astronomical in all of these games that brings a factor of luck into this equation because a normal batting average on balls in play is usually in around the 250s. You're not really supposed to get lucky enough that every ball you hit in play, it's dropping. Of course, when you're as good as a guy like Aaron Judge, Bobby Witt Jr., Shohei Otani, some of these top level guys, their BABIP is going to be higher because they put the ball in play a lot more. But Clay Holmes is not going up against these types of guys. A lot of the time, he's getting hit, the ball's not getting hit hard yet it's finding holes so it makes you think is clay holmes as bad as it seems no probably not let us be honest here 10 blown saves is bad we can look at the analytics and we could say they're not all his fault those are like seven wins the yankees could have had right now and part of the reason the babip is so high is because no one fears him no one's really off balance when they go up against Clay Holmes. They know his pitch mix. He's got a sinker and he's got a slider. And you know what he does? He goes 80% one pitch, 20% another pitch. So they let the leadoff hitter come up. They say, okay, let's see what pitch he's got today. They let the first hitter wait him out, see what he's got, and then everyone else follows suit. Sometimes these expected stats can also be misleading in the fact that it doesn't bring up some of the context some of you feel merchants bring up. What pitch mix does the guy have? Are the hitters able to sit on certain pitches? Is the guy bringing an amount of fear? What inning is this happening in? Is it happening in the clutch? Does the guy have a clutch factor? There's a whole host of certain things that could be a factor that aren't really brought up in some of these advanced analytics, which is really a whole different conversation on the war against advanced stats and feel guys. That's a whole different conversation. We'll do that in another video. I don't think it's fully fair to say that Clay Holmes is perfectly fine staying in the closer role because he's gotten unlucky at times. Because some of that unluckiness, he's brought upon himself. What do I always say about closer? You have to have one of two things. You either have to have pinpoint control or you have to have something a hitter fears. There is no pitch in Clay Holmes' repertoire that a hitter will fear. He's not going to fear the slider because his slider is a wild mess and his sinker is 97. And yes, when it's on, it's a good pitch. It's not the best pitch. It's a good pitch. Good to great. I'll even give him that. But it is off more times than it's on. He keeps that pitch elevated. And if a hitter knows you're either throwing sinker or slider, yeah, they're gonna be able to put the ball in play more. And that's made Clay Holmes be a 
contact oriented closer that is a recipe for disaster because we see it with marcus stroman contact pitchers at times will get shelled because you're not going to miss barrels a hundred percent of the time and to have that be a one inning thing yeah you're gonna lead the league in blown saves because you're allowing them to put the ball in play and trust your defense behind you. Sometimes your defense is going to fail you. Sometimes the ball is going to fall. And because you only have one inning, these results are exacerbated because there's less results to have. As a starter, you can work through the game and sort of get softer contact as the game goes on. As a closer, you got one shot to get this done. And if you don't, you lost the game. As a starter, you did not lose the game in the first inning. Some people may think you did if you gave up like six runs. You did not fully lose the game. You can build as the game goes on. A closer cannot build into their outing. So a contact oriented closer is a risky thing to do in the first place and that's where clay holmes finds himself in a predicament where yes there are times where he gets unlucky the expected weighted on base average is going to be low because he's not a bad pitcher he is a solid relief pitcher but the reason why he's a solid relief pitcher is because he's got good stuff a closer is a whole different ball game where you either have to have electric stuff or elite control he's got neither and when you play to contact in the last inning of games you're going to get burned here and there and you can't afford to get burned here and there especially in the area we want to be in which is october so what do you do if you're the yankee the trade deadline's gone your trade acquisitions have been absolute dog shit i thought mark Leiter would be a lot better than he has been he's shown an ability to be able to spin that shit problem is when you're able to spin that shit if it don't spin the way you want it to spin it just stays and it has been staying in that spot more than it's been spinning out and mark leiter has been burned we almost lost the last game of the texas series because of mark leiter and then Eniel De Los Santos, I actually had hope that that was going to be an A-plus Cashman move because it was so under the radar, yet he is such a good strikeout pitcher. But obviously, he left his strikeout stuff in San Diego, and he brought his 6 ERA with him. He also did not find a way to get these strikeouts. I thought both of those guys, if they would have performed, could have been candidates for the closer role if Clay continued to struggle. There are a couple options here the Yankees could go with. You start off with Luke Weaver, who has looked really good in spurts all year and he's starting to get back into the mode of being consistent again he's getting hitters off balance with his kind of quick motion 97's looking a little bit higher than what it is he has been a lot more consistent than what clay holmes has been so i would not be against putting luke weaver into that spot as he has put up the numbers over the past month that would tell you he should get an opportunity there you have a guy like Jake Cousins that's being thrown around. He has had an amazing couple weeks, kind of giving this bullpen a bit of stability. I don't know if he's ready to be in a closer role. It is an option, but the Yankees have to go somewhere else because Clay Holmes, although his stuff is proving to be effective enough to where hitters should not be getting on base as much as they are, his style is never going to work as a closer. That's why I always loved him in the eighth inning slot when it was eighth inning him, ninth inning Aroldis. Because he can go through the eighth inning, maybe give up a couple hits, but overall not have the pressure on him to close out that game. And then you had Aroldis come in who had that fear factor inside of him. 102 can be in his back pocket. And although his ending here in New York was a bit of a salty one, don't forget he was dominant a couple years here in pinstripes the yankees don't got a guy like that anymore they have a lot of good guys that can limit damage they don't have guys that can fully dominate if you think of the guys who can limit damage guys like michael tonkin guys like luke weaver guys like jake cousin these are the guys you think of when you say to yourself these guys are good at limiting damage you can't really pinpoint luke weaver yeah he's got one of the better fastballs in baseball you can make an argument that his fastball plays up so he does have a pretty good fastball but it's 97 it's not in the triple digits he also doesn't have 
the Emmanuel Classe nasty slider. No, a guy like Tonkin does not have the nastiest slider in baseball. But something has to change in that ninth inning because Clay Holmes, although is a good pitcher and I want to continue to reiterate that. This is not me trying to say Clay Holmes sucks. He should be off the team. He is a quality pitcher. And yes, other bullpens would improve by adding him, but not as a closer. They would improve by adding him as a setup man. In my opinion, Luke Weaver deserves the shot because he is the closest thing to having one of the two things that a closer definitely needs. But what do you guys think? Do you think Clay Holmes should continue being the closer of this team? Let me know down below. Do you think Luke Weaver should get it? Jake Cousins, Michael Tonkin, let me know. Like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new. Losing the series to Detroit really sucked, but now we got a huge series at home against Cleveland. Hopefully the Yankees can pull that one out. I'll see you guys next time. Take care and peace.